Good morning and welcome to the Tuolumne and Soulsbyville United Methodist Churches as we continue to worship online. Um, In-person worship is something we're beginning to work on and plan out. Um, we'll let you know when that's going to come about. Let's, um, let's start with a, a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we want to be more like you. Lord, as we journey through this Easter season, we want to learn more about you, but Lord, also to engage our imagination and really be open to being the people that you want us to be, the community that you want us to be. Lord, we open our hearts and our minds to fill us up as we go through this time of worship. And Lord, so that we're able to fill ourselves up, Lord, we, we turn over to you the things that, that we hold on to and struggle with. Lord, we give you all the places that we need you to work on healing in our lives. And Lord, there are people in our, in our lives, in our, our, our friends, our family, our community that need physical healing. And, and Lord, we, we turn them over to you. And Lord, we just pray that um, you work on being just a healing presence in their lives, bringing them back to health. And Lord, we... We pray for, boy, all the divisiveness and hurt that is so rampant, even in our own community, but throughout our nation and throughout your world. Lord, we, we pray for the day that your kingdom more fully comes, that we live in peace. And Lord, when it does fully come and we, we all live under your reign, Lord, we pray all of these things, Lord, as we ask you to mold us and make us more like Jesus. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's continue with worship. This is Psalm 4, one of David's beginning resources. We come to it as part of our worship, worship in God's house, among God's people, throughout God's land, in any way we can. Answer me when I call, O God. 
God of my right. You have given me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, O oh people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the righteous as God's own. The Lord hears when I call. Be angry, but do not sin. Commune with your own hearts in your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when, they, when their grain and wine abound. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make, make me lie, lie down, down in safety. safety. Hello everyone. Our New Testament reading is from uh, the book of John. It's 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. Children of God, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. I invite you to join in a moment of prayer. Dear Lord, may all of our thoughts and our feelings, the meditations of our minds and of our hearts, 
and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Holy imagination. I, I, I bet you, you have probably already learned this about me, but I've always believed that it's vital. It's vital that we hold on to the childlike nature of our faith. And I was really intrigued by Homiletics Magazine, the way they linked together imagination and the epistle reading for today. Have you ever watched a group of younger children playing together? The first thing you'll notice is that each of them believes that they are more than they appear to be. Just give kids a, a bunch of pillows and blankets and, and they no longer are small children but mighty warriors constructing an impenetrable fortress. Tie a tea towel around their neck, and they transform from mild mannered kindergartner into invincible caped crusader. Give them a leftover cardboard tube, and suddenly they're a wizard, a Jedi Knight, a musician, an astronomer scouting for the stars. Boy, I, I know how highly coveted the cardboard tubes were in, in our household growing up. As well as capes and forts. What looks like simple fun is actually a vitally important work in a child's development. Imaginative Play develops important psychological and emotional capabilities in children, helping them learn how to solve problems, create new possibilities, and perhaps even more importantly, develop the belief that they can one day change the world. Imagination transcends the limits of the present physical world and the limits of a child's inner world, opening new ways of seeing and being. That is why, you know, it, we, we bypass giving Amelia, our granddaughter, fancy gadgets and, and give her these old-fashioned toys because we want to give her things that will help her engage her imagination. It's not just that we're cheap grandparents. <laughs> this is something we really believe in. Somewhere along the line, however, imagination begins to become less important than knowledge. As we get older, we tend to be concerned with what is more than what can be. Education gives us amazing tools for learning about our present world and about ourselves. But sometimes that knowledge can begin to impose limits on our imagination, on our capability to think outside the box. It's not that knowledge is unimportant. It's that knowledge is limited without imagination. Albert Einstein, who, who most people might consider the, the avatar for the pursuit of knowledge, once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. For knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world. Imagination is everything. It is a preview of life's coming attractions. So what's true for education would seem to be true for theology and a life of discipleship. We pursue knowledge of the Bible, knowledge of God, knowledge of doctrine, all important things. I, I'll tell you how we have to combat biblical illiteracy. 
But sometimes we can become so enamored with that knowledge that we fail to cultivate an imagination of what God is actually wanting to do in us and through us. Do you get that? We become so enamored enamored with knowledge that we fail to cultivate an imagination of what God is actually wanting to do in us and through us. We need both a strong foundation of knowledge of God and a holy imagination to live out the vision of the eternal life that God has for us, both now and in the future. Perhaps, perhaps that's why John consistently referred to his audiences as children in this epistle of 1 John, which is really, it's more of a homily. It's an invitation to cultivate a childlike imagination of the kind of life God made possible for them in Jesus the Christ. And early in the homily, back before we, we get to today's reading, John lays out the difference between the accumulation of knowledge and the imagination that leads to action. It's one thing to have knowledge of the truth and say, I'm in the light, which in John's language is, is a metaphor for walking with Christ. But if you cannot use knowledge to imagine and demonstrate love for one's brothers and sisters, oh, that one is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, does not know the way to go because the darkness has brought on blindness. That, that's 1 John 2, 9-11. Antichrist had, had slipped into the community denying that, that Jesus is a Christ and John urges the community to refute that falsehood with their knowledge. You know, he, he's calling on them to use their knowledge, but, but that knowledge had to become activated in their imagination of who Christ is and who he calls them to be. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who does right has been born of him. Oh, for you Dragnet fans, that, that's just saying following Jesus isn't being a bunch of Joe Friday saying just the facts. Those who are born of him are indeed children of God. We, we might say that the children of God are, are the product of God's own imagination going all the way back to creation. When God created humankind in God's own image, in the prologue of John, which is likely written by the same writer who penned first John, we read that Jesus, the Word made flesh, is the perfect image of God, the one who was made him known to the world. And those who receive him have been given the power to become children of God who are born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. All of this is God's initiative out of God's imagination and through God's love. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. That is what we are. That's, that's how our epistle reading, reading began today. But we aren't merely God's children. Now John goes on to say, 
we are to imagine something more. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. In other words, the children of God are to imagine that they can and will become like Jesus, the perfect image of God. To put it another way, the children of God are to imagine themselves in the person of Jesus Christ and to act accordingly. Kind of like... You know, when, when children wrap themselves up in the garb of their hero, who they want to be, we are to put on Christ. Paul uses this image in Romans 13, 14 and Galatians 3, 27. As a child might imagine being a force of pure good in the world, children of God who imagine that they can be like Jesus, also purify themselves just as he is pure. Whether we call it being more Christ-like or, or working on our spiritual disciplines, being made in the image of Christ is a work of imagination. Holy imagination. And then that's where the real superpower for, for those who believe. The more a child of God believes that he is made in the mold of Jesus, the more power they have over sin. You know that he was reve revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin, says John. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Anyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Imagination. I, I don't know if you... you yeah, you follow the comic strip uh, Pearls Before Swine. It's written by Stephen Pastis. And, and, and in this Sunday's comic, he, he put a poem, Imagine. Imagine there's no Facebook. It's easy if you try. No trolls berate us. Around us, no more lies. Imagine all the crackpots silenced for the day. Imagine there's no Twitter. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to shill or cry for, and no retweets, too. Imagine all the people being kind to you. You may say, I hate screamers, but I'm not the only one who hopes one day we'll stop this and the world will be more fun. Of course, he, he, he's, he's paying tribute or, or, or bouncing off the, the, the John Lennon song, Imagine. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion, too. Imagine all the people living in peace. You may say I am a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, and all the world will be one. Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man. 
Imagine all the people sharing all the world. You may say I am a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be one. You know, Lennon's song is a classic. It's inspired so many to dream of a better world, created parks, being used in, in worship services. Christians need to be able to imagine the kingdom of God, the new creation, which Jesus told so many parables about. We have to be able to see ourselves as the people God intends us to be. And here's where imagination becomes critical for the children of God. We cannot imagine that we can have victory over sin. That, that, that if we cannot imagine, if we cannot imagine, if we don't have holy imagination, we cannot have victory over sin. That, then we are trapped in a never-ending addictive cycle of sin and repentance, then there's a good indication that we aren't living as children of God, but rather as children of the devil. And the verse just after what we read, John says, children of the devil who've been sinning from the beginning. If we believe we are born of God, however, we can imagine a life that's not dominated by the constant cycle of sin because our lives are modeled after Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the proof our imagination is ultimately found in its results. The children of God and the children of the devil are revealed in this way. All who do not do what is right are not from God, nor are those who do not love their brothers and sisters. Whew. Doesn't First John pack a punch? A child at play believes he or she can be or do anything. I, I, I hope you haven't got so grown up you, you've forgotten that. A healthy imagination breeds creativity, confidence, and, and a vision for the best of what life can be. Imagination can, can lead a disciple to, pers to the pursuit of these imagined goals, a focus on what to embrace and what to avoid in the pursuit of that goal, and the imagination of the kind of people we want to be. Children of God need to cultivate a hap healthy imagination for the kind of people God has created them to be. People modeled on Jesus who love God and one another and then develop the habits and practices that will get them there. That is how we, we, we change ourselves and, and, and that is how God will use us to change the world. I, I hope you can hang on to that holy imagination. And let's be the people in the community God wants us to be. God's love will get us there. Amen.